The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. All right, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX this morning. As you can see, it is making a 135 pattern with three lower tops. And that is usually uh, pretty significant when the cycles line up. And as you can see from the work that Alan's done, that they line up just absolutely perfectly. Now, if the DAX strengthens up and gets above 0.5, this pattern would certainly be wrong, but that's the that's the beauty of patterns, folks. Uh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, and you have to be prepared for when they don't. Uh, when they work, that's the easy part. It's when they don't work is when it's tough. So you've got to be able to prepare yourself for when the patterns fail to move on uh, to the next pattern for sure. Now, if we take a look at the FTSE, uh, which has been the weaker of the two markets, you'll get up here and you'll be able to see this uh, relatively uh, quickly here, we had almost a perfect 61% retracement there on May the 22nd. We came down to almost, uh, well, actually uh, another 707 retracement. And then we did rally up to a 61% retracement this morning, and then we backed off a little bit. But I have to think that the, the preponderance of evidence tells us that we're heading down towards the lower end of this pattern that is drawn in. So that's what I would be uh, looking at uh, for sure. Now, there is a lot of rhetoric uh, in the markets today about the importance of the Chinese uh, embargo, uh, trade uh, problems and everything. And Jamie Dimon came out and said that, uh, you know, this could be economically a, a disaster as well. This has been going on for a long time, boys and girls. So just because it doesn't mean that... Uh, uh, someone says something, it doesn't mean that it's so. That's including me and anybody else. You're the one that has to make up the decision on whether you want to put a trade on or not and take the responsibility for it. Now, one of the disadvantages of pattern recognition, which to me is an advantage, is you don't understand or you need to know what the fundamentals are. The fundamentals are lined up in that bar chart that you're looking at. If prices are going up, there's more buying. If prices are going down, there's more selling. That's what we're uh, basically looking at. Now, we do have a very special guest today. Norm Winsky will be on. He calls it to the minute from Astro Trend down in Florida, and he'll be on at the 9.30 break. And then we have a caller coming in at uh, the end of the first break at 9.20. Mr. Z from Philadelphia is going to be calling in, and we're going to be discussing the grains because, as you know, if you have any idea of what a weather report looks like and have seen any of the weather channels, the Midwest and upper Midwest uh, is underwater, and they're not able to get the corn crop in, and that is pulling corn, beans, and wheat all higher from much lower levels, I might add. But corn has actually moved uh, a great deal higher. Regarding the corn, uh, folks, the reason why it's so important here is that at $4 corn, uh, this is where most of the hedges were put on this year in corn, Simon only tells us, that at that level, uh, on, a, on 100 acres of land, if a farmer has 100, acre, 100 acres of land, he makes between uh, $800 and $1,000 per acre. So a 100-acre farm should make $100,000. Oh, we got Mr. Z on right now. What's up, Mr. Z? How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Don't let me interrupt. Your, no, uh, no, no, no. I'm just telling Simone's you what side. Idea. I'd like to yeah, listen. Well, he, he basically said that uh, he thought corn was going to go a lot higher. He didn't know how much higher, but they're 20% behind in the planning, and it's not getting any better. It's getting worse. And uh, But the let's just get this. Uh, get We'll put two corn charts up. We'll put the continuation chart up that goes over uh, the last five years, and you can see we're in that area where we were. Uh, you know, over the last few years, up in that four dollars, we're at four twenty, I believe now in December corn, four twenty eight in December corn, but we're back into this level again. That should be it. But this is a big deal because those farmers that didn't hedge, you know, during November December when they had a chance when the banks were out, uh, they have a chance to do that now. The problem, what Sai said, is this this these patterns 
um, let's say these insurance programs that they have are based on a planning date of June the 5th. If they can't get their corn in by June 5th, the insurance and all this other stuff goes out the window and they're, they're, left, they're left high and dry. In other words, they, they might not uh, have much corn and corn could go to $6 and they don't make any money at all. So it's very important that this corn gets uh, planted in the next week is what they said. So uh, this is very late. So we'll find out. But the weather reports are getting worse, not better. So we'll see whether that means anything or not. What are you hearing? Uh, well, just the same. Um, what I'd like to do is ask, I'm looking in Tiger TV, see your weekly chart. Mm -hmm. uh, your pattern work has been so helpful to me over the years when you ignore the fundamentals and say, what, what is price? What is pattern? Where are my Fibonacci expansion targets? Do I see anything that I recognize? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you do that. It just, um, uh, rigorously and uh, I'd like to ask you what, what uh, uh, if you do that right here on that weekly chart because I want to be prepared in advance for numbers that would occur to you as being important and if we get there watch the market closely to be prepared to book gains or hang tight or what have you so can you help us with that at all uh, I would John but then I'd have to kill you no, of course I can. I, I'm, hey, I'm going to give you my two cents worth, my friend. But here's the here's Christmas corn. I've got the Christmas December corn up here. You can see the bottom we made down there. It's a big uh, uh, butterfly bottom, 1.27 expansion. And we had the big outside uh, week, and then we've had one, two, three weeks straight up. If you look at the top part of this, uh, we're trading at around 4.29 in corn this morning. We've got a 1.27 expansion at 4.35. And uh, to me, that could be the exact opposite of what we did on the downside. If you notice from July of 16 up into 17, down into 19, that was a 1.27 expansion. So to me, you know, just to make it equal, if you go the 1.27 from 2017, that takes you into 434. That's six cents from where we are right now. Corn's only up about uh, nine or 10 cents this morning with uh, beans up 20 and uh, wheat almost the same. And believe me, there's a lot of a lot of supplies out there. So I mean, just because they're looking at this weather market, we still have a lot of supplies. The problem is you've got this wide-ranging bar and gaps everywhere. The thing that you have going for you is the fact that you have two numbers between 434 and 439. So your risk on that trade is going to be about seven cents. Now, I certainly don't recommend that uh, for anything. And if you're going to sell anything, John, uh, look at July beans. I mean, they're they're not affected by any of the tariffs or any of this other stuff, and uh, they're the weakest of the group. And if you're going to do something, sell the weakest, not the strongest, which would be December corn followed by, you know, the wheat, which is also very strong. So the the selling that I am going to try to do on the opening here in a, in a few minutes is to sell July beans if they get above 848. They're trading at 843 right now, and if they get up there, taking out those last week's highs. I'm thinking the emotionalism might be there, but I'm will, I'm willing to risk, you know, the $400 to see if that's going to be correct or not. But that's my two cents worth. Will you stay with us till after the break, my friend? I will. Okay. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with uh, John from Philadelphia about the corn and soybean meal markets. Anything else you'd like to add or ask about, Mr. Z? Uh, Larry, I, um, uh, I do. Thanks for uh, posting and sharing that description on that D's Corn Daily chart. Just as a, uh, as a future request, I'm going to ask in the coming days, you, uh, do, your, you do your thing with the weekly corn chart going back 10 years and uh, help us identify higher levels that might uh, uh, provide benchmarks that we can uh, monitor closely if price goes much higher. Um, so that's my, that's my request for the coming days. Uh, I ask you this, Larry, uh, do, you, uh, do you want me to explain or share a three-minute story as to what I think governs the corn price the next 30 days? Absolutely. I, uh, you, of course, I would. Everybody else would too, John. You know, the post that you're okay, making there, Tiger Dan. Go ahead, fire away. Yeah, take your time. Uh, we got plenty it, of time. It's going to take me three minutes because um, <laughs> I'm a slow talker. You, you, you have six minutes. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> Weather is horrible for corn farmers. It is off the charts bad in this sense. The past nine months across the Corn Belt, the East Corn Belt and the West, the entirety, is the wettest in 125 years. The pace of planting corn is the slowest on record. And I don't know if the record, I don't know how long they've been keeping planting progress data. I know it's not 125 years, but it's slow. Okay, so here we are now. Uh, let me just alert you and your listeners just to today and tonight. At 3.30 today, or 3 o'clock, the USDA releases its weekly crop progress report, which gives us more statistical data as to percentage planted in corn as of Sunday. And, of course, that's delayed to Tuesday at 3 p.m. on account of Monday being a holiday. And, of course, at 3 p.m., 
Corn futures trade is closed. Of course, it closes at 2.20 New York time and then reopens on Globex tonight at 8. So I will be monitoring closely since I'm long corn. I wish I was long 10 contracts, not just three, but I'm long. We'll be monitoring closely price reaction, be it unchanged, gap higher, gap lower, uh, tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, and anything we do now here is fraught with risk, and everybody who's involved must understand that. And as, you've, as you preach and you've taught me well, risk management is always key because if, if you get knocked out of the ball game with losses, uh, that's the worst possible thing to happen, so that's what we guard against uh, from the start. Okay, wettest in 125 years, slowest planting on record. I speculate this, Larry, that corn futures, these corn futures will find buyers on every dip. And a dip could be five cents, dip could be 30 cents, I don't know. But I speculate any price high will not occur before June 30th. July 4th, that time frame. The reason is this, it is so wet, the planting conditions across tens of millions of acres is so poor, and farmers have been under great financial stress the past number of years because of low prices, that farmers are in a massive catch-22 right now, uh, namely, they are faced with a decision to, in lieu of planting on wet ground, avail themselves of the government insurance programs that, exi that, that do exist. It's called prevent plant programs, where a farmer can say it's just too wet to plant, I'm not planting, I'm going to apply for and receive prevent plant payments from the government, and that price that they will receive, that's already predetermined, and that was predetermined February 28th. Uh, I won't go into the details of that insurance program, but it's the month of February, the average price that sets the prevent plant price payments, and that was $4. So as we come into this time frame, Farmers who are faced with wet conditions are faced with this choice. Don't plant, take the payment at four bucks. But there's so much that is wet, and there's the incentive right now, just because of Mother Nature, is so huge to have literally 10 million acres, if not more, uh. um, not planted. And the market cannot do without those 10 million acres, price has to rise high enough for long enough into, say, June 10th to give the farmer incentive to say, hey, I'm not taking the insurance program and not planting. I'm going to take the risk because if I take the risk, maybe I get five, six bucks a bushel on a price spike. So because of this, I speculate prices will not fall meaningfully before end of June. Uh, and of course, that's not to say they'll top by end of June. It is to say I speculate price will not fall much before that and that the upside is, is whatever it is. So that's my background for you. Well, I think you're spot on with what Simon only uh, saying at Financial, uh, Sylvia's Financial, too. Spoke with him over the weekend at length, and he's saying the same thing, that the corn market, everything's changed in the corn market because they don't know how much of a crop we're going to have if they have one. So that's a big outlier event, and it could go, uh, you could see $6 corn. If you remember that weekly chart that I posted, I mean, to see 550 corn is not a big deal. You know, we were back there just a few years ago. That's just a buck a bushel higher than this. You know, and if and the farmer's lucky enough to get his crop in at 550 a bushel, that's uh, that's triple sevens on the old slob machine, buddy. That's a lot of money. Yep. You know, yes, if, instead of making a hundred thousand dollars, he makes two hundred thousand dollars, and for farmers, that's a that's a big payout. So I I think Indeed. you're you're right. You want to be looking to be a buyer of corn if you get a sell off. 
Right, and uh, just uh, uh, just to be clear, to give your listeners the bottom line as far as I see it, I uh, until we get to July 1st, under no circumstances, none, not a Zippo, am I mm-hmm. thinking of shorting that market or getting out of longs? I'm merely thinking, okay, fine. I don't know if we get pullbacks, how deep but I do all my work to be prepared to pounce on something. And just for what it's worth, I'll give an example. Last Thursday, there was a drop from, I think, 417 to 405 in literally 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I was prepared and bought some right then. So I'll be doing that sort of thing all this week. Good. Hey, thanks for joining us, Mr. Z, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for calling in. Thank you, Larry. Mr. Z from Philly. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, it's a, with a great deal of regret that we are not going to be having Mr. Norm Winsky on right away. We're having audio difficulties. So hopefully we'll be able to have him on uh, very, very soon. That's what we'd like to see. Now, I would like to bring it uh, to your attention. Uh, we've had several people uh, ask about the, uh, the Bradley model that I posted uh, uh, last week, and I wanted to bring it up here. You'll be able to see here, this is the Bradley model going back to the low on December the 16th. Now, remember, what I did was I shifted that by one week so to see how the fit would line up uh, because – 
you know, this thing is so close that you have to give it a, you know, sir, uh, a little bit of respect. So we need to really uh, watch that very, very closely. Hold on one second here. We have our uh, my soybean uh, beepers going off this morning everywhere, as you might imagine. So we want to be able to turn that off and then we'll be okay there. We're taking out last month's highs. That's what I'd like to see, and we just hit uh, that same number in the July beans at 848, so we're going to see how that's turning out, and uh, we want to watch that. But look at this Bradley model. It's been very good. What this is saying is that we're most probably going to get a sell-off into around June 6th or 7th. That's down another week. Now, we haven't had a major correction here since December 6th. The 382 comes in at around 27 uh, 30 in the S&P, which isn't very much. So that's what I would be looking at. And if that's the case, if it does that, what you'll be watching here is a possibility for the market to rally for 10 weeks from June, uh, June the 6th all the way into August the 25th. Now, those of you that have been around since uh, Moses started trading, which uh, I have been, you'll remember that uh, we have a situation there on August the 25th of 1987. We had harmonic convergence. We had five planets in the sign of Leo uh, on that day, and that was the top in the market for well over two years, and uh, that led to the crash of 1987. But I'm not talking crash here. I'm just saying if the Bradley model lines up like this, pay attention to it because, you know, it doesn't work all the time, but when it does and when it lines up with the patterns, you know, there's nothing, you know, wrong with that. You know, I, I'm, you know... I, I, all I'm doing is looking at the patterns, folks. I mean, if you're asking for more than, boy, oh, boy, hold on just a minute here. These boys and girls here are making my life with these beepers going off. I had beepers going off in corn, wheat, beans, and everything else. I wanted to see how they handle these levels that we're dealing at here. One second here. I've got to get it up. Just bar bear with me one second, folks. Uh, the one thing I have been able to do that you'll be happy to hear is that you remember how I used to have a hard time uh, finding uh, the, uh, the the charts no longer. I figured out how to do it. All I had to do is to change my icons on my desktop to a bit larger, and the old cowboys able to see them. So that's the main thing. I wanted to to bring to your attention something about the patterns because this is important. Going back in history, this is the big bull market that we had in soybeans into 2011. Uh, also, we were topping in all commodities that we topped in uh, silver at that time and also gold. You'll notice that we had that big AB3 three, three drive to a top pattern, just absolutely perfect ABCD. And then the market's been going down here, you know, for the last six years. We bottomed actually 2015. The last low that we made touched that 61% retracement level in the meal. So there's a there's a, prim a primarily, that's what we're watching. So we'll see uh, what's that. I don't know if I'm going to do 10 years or not, Bob. But, uh, you know, it's been a good run so far. I've been so lucky to do what I do. <laughs> I, I spoke with uh, uh, a nice young man from Hong Kong over the weekend, and he's just getting started in the business and is very excited. And, you know, he said he's working 10, 12 hours a day on the patterns. And I said, well, welcome to the club, you know. And once you see that first sign of light that you're able to actually do this, that will change you because you'll start uh, getting more interested in the markets once you understand that they're not that hard to look at. You know, so that's primarily what you want to remember, that these are just patterns. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I've been asked to take a look here uh, at the, uh, let's get up here to this. very unusual to not have Norm on. Hold on just a second. Here is the, the Bitcoin, boys and girls. Uh, you'll notice the Bitcoin had a pullback at the 382 retracement. Very, very fast, down to 6400 We are now $2,300 a share higher. We're breaking out above the 61%, the 78%. This sets up an ABCD structure in Bitcoin, folks, from the low at 3200 to the high at 8400 to the low at 3400 uh, That takes you up to 12 large, 12000 And 12000 in Bitcoin is you stop and think. You went from 20,000 down to three. That's 17, okay? The 61% retracement on that would be 11. Bada bing, bada boom. You'd be right up at the 61% retracement if we get to 12,000. So pay attention to that. Guess what, boys and girls? With the telegraph operator from Naples, Florida has just kicked in, and it says that Mr. Winsky is at his desk and ready to go. So if TFNN will 
uh, check in with him. Let's get started, and uh, we'll be happy to. Uh, we'll be able to see, and we'll be able to. <laughs> well, uh, do that. You know, it, it would be lucky at that time. Uh, okay, he's still having some problems. I don't understand what. Uh, try uh, Norm, if you're listening. Uh, try to go into TFNN two. And take a look at that, if you would, please. TFNN2, that's what I would be looking at. And we, while we're waiting for that, we're going to check in with um, uh, coffee for our friend Ruby. We'll get this up here. Um, this uh, coffee is actually looking pretty good. I don't know what it's doing today. But the good part here, uh, Ruby, is you notice that we had those three higher bottoms in there. They're uh, spot on right now. We're up to, right. I don't know, 94, 93.20 was the last price I saw. So it looks like a coffee's getting ready to turn. The ABCD structure on this takes you to 99, and uh, that would be equal to the last rally that we had back in uh, January. So it still looks positive. I don't know where it's trading right now, but that's what we're that's what we're paying attention to as we look at these things here uh, this morning. So we'll uh, we'll watch that. Anyway, we're still having a little difficulty with Norm. Norm, you're going to have to start paying your phone. Well, nobody pays phone bills anymore. Everybody's got a landline of some kind, but it's unusual that we don't have Norm. Norm, uh, don't panic because if we don't have you on today, uh, I could have you on uh, sometime in, let me see, this is May, uh, maybe November. We might have a spot in November or tomorrow. You could be on tomorrow. We maybe get the correction done and uh, we'll get a pretty good idea uh, of what we're watching here. Okay, let's move on to a couple things. Folks, the, the thing that I think is the most important thing that's happened over the weekend, hold on, this might be it. We might have Norm on the line now. Uh, oh, we got Beverly from Princeton, New Jersey. Yes, dear, what can I help you with? Well, I, I want to talk to you about the grains. I was listening hey. to Greg Hunter on YouTube, and he has, this is on Friday, and these, these figures are from the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture, okay? okay. Normally, 80% of the grain, uh, excuse me, of the corn is in the ground now. Uh, as of Friday, only 47% was in, so it was down by almost half. That's and correct. And as far as soybeans go... Normally, almost 50% of the soybeans are in the ground. That's the five-year average. But as of Friday, only 19% were, you know, was planted. So I yep. don't see how we can have these low prices right now. I mean, the, a lot of this land is never going to be planted. I agree with you, dear. We'll watch it again. Thanks for calling in, Beverly. We really appreciate hearing from you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, we're back by way of Terre Haute, Indiana, where the corn is underwater. Norm, how are you doing, my friend? Take over the great. mic. Great. Hey, great, Larry. Uh, thanks for having me on your on your show. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Very good, sir. All right, so we don't have much time because we lost the whole segment there. So I got to try to do this it's roughly in about one segment, I guess, right? So here we go. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen. And we have my notes here from uh, reviewing my notes from when I was on, on May 17th. I showed you these events that were coming up. We had the 16th at AC is after the close. So that was really Overnight into the 17th, we had Jupiter making a 90 to the U.S. Neptune. That's based on U.S. natal chart. Is what we we take a snapshot of the planets at the time that something began or was born, and our country was. I think our country was founded on July the 4th, 1776. Then we had the, over the weekend that 17th after the close. 17th was a Friday, and so over that uh, weekend we had a full moon. In uh, at the tail end of Scorpio there, and then we also had uh, Saturn lining up in uh, with uh, in I'm sorry Jupiter in Sagittarius lined up with Uranus in Taurus, and we will be looking at cattle, cotton, copper, cotton, and stocks, and then we had Mercury at zero latitude. Mercury is big for the grains, so we got your corn, and we won't bother with oats, soybeans, stocks do uh, respond to about everything, and wheat. And then they had the moon's north node in Cancer, 180 degrees from Saturn and Capricorn. That's going to be coffee, silver, and stock. So now we'll look at the, oh, and we had some specific mathematical harmonics for the stock market. May 22, that was a very interesting, based on the Pythagorean math for the, our whole music system, Pythagoras invented, called the chromatic scale. If you uh, multiply that out, one of the numbers you hit is three, 32,000. 768, and if you t uh, multiply those days from uh, the, from September the 3rd, 1929, the top in 29, uh, that gets you to May 22. Then I had them on my Fibonacci cycles, I had May 21, so I'll be watching for the May 21, 22 window for the stock market. So I have these all marked on this chart here, S&P chart, and you can see here the arrows are astro points. And then we have over here, we uh, we had a one there that was just off that top right there on the 16th. Uh, we had a secondary top there on the 17th. Then we went down to Monday the 20th. We had about three or four different points for that, which we made a little bit of a low there. And then we popped up for the 21st, 22nd. The F is for Fibonacci, M is for uh, market math or music math. And then we had a little uh, kind of a double top there between Monday and Tuesday. And then we we were making a kind of a little wedgie pattern there, and we broke the, down the triangle, and that was because over the weekend we had the full moon and Mercury at zero latitude. One of my major things, the key times give you the key prices. So when we took out that, I believe it was the 2832 level, 3132 level on the S&P, that was a big break, and that caused the 
that told you that we were probably going to have a move down to some serious levels, and we went down. And I said, say, I think I said in my next update, we probably go down and retest the low of the month, which was at about 2801 uh, area there, and that's we got down I think about 2805. So there, there's your S and P. We'll be coming back to that probably a little later. Here's your T bonds. They had a couple points. We had the Friday the 17th and uh, kind of nailed that. And then we had the uh, full moon. And then they took a day because it was on the weekend. You have to give it one full trading day. And so that takes you into early Tuesday, the 21st. And we made a nice low there. So not too bad. Here's your dollar. Kind of a mixed picture on the dollar there. You had the, again, I had the 17th for a change in trend. We made a little short term top there. Then we kind of be kind of messed up the picture there. We kind of uh, kind of had a uh, I don't know what you call that uh, that bar there on the 21st where we kind of made a low and made a high, and so I had to mark that as a miss with a red arrow. Here's your crude oil. Crude oil. I had the Friday the 17th as a change of trend day for the crude oil, and that uh, was very good. It only went about 10 maybe 20 cents higher on the following Monday. And that was pretty close to the top right there on the 17th. Here's the Aussie dollar. It was kind of a double dipper and that we made a high on Monday, right? And on the, with the full moon, the currencies dance to the full moon, you know? And it went up and then it made one of the, the, the safe, safest trade, though, was when it went and retested that low back here on the, what was that, about the 16th or so. And when you retested that low, then you could have bought there and then it eventually moved higher over the uh, coming days. Here's your yen. Yen is, has a track record of being very good with the moons. And you can see there that it made a nice low there right on the 21st with the uh, with your yen. Here's your gold. The gold has had been uh, tracking the moon uh, about a day late over the last several months, day, day after. And there it is on the 21st, made a nice low with the gold. Silver was even better with uh, making a uh, kind of a low uh, pattern here, bottom pattern here, right between Friday the 17th and the uh, tw uh, 20th. I would have put my, it could get my arrow underneath there, so I had to put it on top there, but that's still, I think that's the low, low of the month there, right on the 20th, right on Monday the 20th, following the full moon. Uh, there's the corn there. Corn was so-so. Uh, if you sold on the 17th, probably sold it too soon, probably would have got stopped out, lost money. That's, oh, that's the 20th. If you waited till the 21st, uh, you could have made a little bit of money. Obviously, corn is on the, the bull was rampant there in the in the corn, and so uh, the upward trend was too strong. The other grains behaved a little uh, more, more, a little more cooperative. And here's your beans there right on the 21st making its top. And there's your wheat making a nice top right on the 21st. And there's cocoa. We had the full moon in Scorpio. That's associated with cocoa. And so we made a little short-term top there in the cocoa. And here's the hogs are even better. They topped out right there on the 20th. And then they, that's been, the, I think that's been, the, the, uh, well, almost the high of the month. We had a high back on the 1st of May, which would have been higher, certainly the high of the middle of the month. And here's your coffee making a low there right around the uh, 17th to the 21st area there uh, for the coffee. So now we get to look ahead, and we have coming up here in the next few days, we have uh, Jupiter is going to make 180 to the U.S. Mars. So we'll be looking for a change of trend for U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and U.S. dollar. And then we also have after that's the, uh, that'll be on Thursday the 30th mostly because that's after the close of the 29th, again, uh, after the Close the 29th, we have Saturn and Capricorn uh, lining up a Pluto and Capricorn. We got uh, like a triple Capricorn thing going there because Saturn is the ruling planet for Capricorn. And we'll be looking for, looking at, here's your shopping list coming up here for the coming week. So you got your stocks, T-bonds, dollar. You got cocoa, coffee, hogs, again, stocks and T-bonds. And then we have a new moon over the, after the cl no, close of uh, the 31st. That'll be Friday over that weekend. It will actually be early Monday morning before the markets open. I think it's about, I don't know, 4, 5, 6 in the morning. I forget the exact time. And we'll, again, you're watching, watching your usual suspects or financials, grains of precious metals, 
at that time for uh, over the weekend this coming the next weekend so i have a couple of harmonics here for the stock market there's a fibonacci harmonic there for the 28th 29th today's the 28th we also have some astro dates here for the Norm, 28th uh, we have 30th to, and 31. we have to pay a few bills stay with us and we'll let you wind yes. up in a few minutes okay yes, yes sir thank you you I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And, Norm, why don't you uh, wrap it up? Because, you know, we missed you the first eight minutes, and the uh, folks at the den are just crying their eyes out, and they want to hear more about you. So fire away, my friend. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you now a quickie. I, was, I thought I was going to allocate two minutes to this, but I might have to go with 30 seconds, demonstration on my day trading system, S trading S&P E-mini. Uh, I give these times out. I send these times to my clients a whole month in advance. Every There's a page for every day with all the intraday times. For example, on Friday, on May 24th, we had the moon was 90 degrees of Venus at 12, 18 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You can go look it up on the Internet. I'm sure you'll find everybody says about the same thing within one minute of my time. And let's go see how that worked out. Moon 90 to Venus, and we don't. I don't use more than a two hand uh, maximum uh, risk stop loss, two handle stop loss, and so we're never risking more than a hundred dollars on a trade. Here you go. The market comes down, we buy. Market goes up, we sell. Market came down into our time to eight twelve eighteen. There you can see the prices. And I was one two ticks early and one minute ahead of that twelve nineteen low. Then the market started going up, up, up. We draw a simple trend line under those bottoms there. 
and it never breaks the trend line until we get up here to the uh, we made uh, seven and a half handles uh, three hundred seventy five dollars on one s p contract in 25 minutes so that's better than working at walmart you know there you go all right that's so that's good. that contact me i'll give you i have a 20 minute free class teach you the day trading i got a more extensive class for the swing trading you can learn astro uh, learn uh, fractals uh, gan whatever you want to learn i probably know a little bit about it and i'll teach you that and you get a college education for traders in a few hours class or you can do the 20 minute day trading class and i'll teach you how you day trading the next day and it's been very successful all right here's my contact information there i am in naples florida 239-594-3939 there's n winsky at embarkmail.com there's my skype and winsky underscore one looking forward to helping some of your folks call me right away classes begin next week and i got to get you in the queue in the next few days call call me today thanks norm 